So we are here um, to celebrate and uplift the farmers who participated in the Genesee Valley Black Farmers Marketing Project um, and to connect those farmers with all of you, people who want to support their businesses. So thank you so much for coming um, and we're gonna get started. This is our program for the evening. Um, we are gonna share a little bit about the event. We have a special event dedication uh, this evening. So I'll share about that. Um, and then we'll move right into the portraits of the participating farmers in the project. Um, and so excited to introduce you all to them. Um, and then after the farmer portraits, we'll move into a panel discussion, have some time for audience question and answers, which at that point, um, at any point in the night too, you can put um, questions in the chat. So feel free to put your questions in the chat. Um, and then uh, we'll wrap up at about 6.20 and the program will conclude at 6.30. So I just want to start tonight by acknowledging this wonderful, beautiful woman, Mrs. Betty Moss, who is the mother of one of our participating farmers, Wilford Moss Jr., who is with us tonight. Um, and it is, I'm so sorry to say that she did just pass this, this week. Um, and so I just would ask that you all join, uh, join myself, join us in supporting the Moss family um, in their farm. So uh, we'll put that link in the chat and please take a look and, um, and if you're able, uh, join us in supporting the Moss family at this time. And just so grateful for um, everything that Mrs. Moss brought into this world um, and including her son who is with us tonight. So giving thanks. All right, so what is this project? Um, for those of you who might be new to uh, work supporting black farmers, um, according to the 2017 USDA agricultural census, there are only 139 black farmers in New York state compared to 57,000 white farmers statewide. And black farmers make just $1 compared to the $5 a white farmer makes. So for these reasons and many others, Food for the Spirit has been committed to supporting black farmers in New York state um, since 2019. So as many of you know, farm, farming is a big business uh, in New York state. It's a $42 billion industry on which every sector relies, right? So um, it's very critical that black farmers contributions in New York are counted, that they are recognized, that they are valued, um, and really that they are connected to communities and also black communities um, where there are substantial disparities. So as I mentioned, Food for the Spirit has been working with many partners across the state to support black farmers. We do this through education, outreach, advocacy, um, and support for the development of networks and cooperative systems. And in August of 2021, we launched this Genesee Valley collective marketing project to support um, black farmers in the nine counties of the Genesee Valley region. And this project was made possible through support from uh, the Genesee Valley Regional Market Authority and the New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets. So we're so thankful for them to make this possible. And um, our goals for this project were to develop a set of marketing materials to highlight the farmers in this region, their farm products, their businesses, and to connect the farmers with markets of their choosing. So, we were really excited that this project uh, was going to help us find more Black farmers in this region um, who might be disconnected from existing networks of support. Um, 
And we also hope to connect those participating farmers with markets that wanted to prioritize purchasing from Black farmers, farmers of color. And we envisioned that through a collective marketing initiative, we could connect those farmers that are participating with networks of support and with the markets who want to buy from them. So the next most exciting part is who has participated. So the first um, step for our project was to find marketing expertise. And we were so blessed to connect with um, Alexa Joan Wajed of Eat Off Art based in Buffalo, New York. Um, so I'm gonna be really excited to turn it over to Alexa in just a few minutes. Um, and she'll share with, her, with us her uh, work on this project. And then of course the farmers. I, you know what, I'm gonna back up for a minute um, because also on this project is of course, um, aside from myself from Food for the Spirit is Emily Miauchi, who's been a key leader in this project and her expertise around food systems um, and work in the state has been really important. So just also want to acknowledge Emily Miauchi. Now, onto the farmers. So we had uh, four farmers that stuck with us for the majority of this project. We started seeking five um, and um, we started with five, four stayed on with us through the end of 2021. Um, Kenneth Tucker, who is listed here, who we are going to share some about, recently left the area to move down south to be closer with family. Um, so tonight we're going to be speaking with Allison Espinosa of Rutgers Croft, Ma Will Moss Jr. Um, of Moss Fresh Fruits and Vegetables in Albion, and Pamela Ray Smith of Harlem Brewed Teas. So before I uh, turn it over to Alexa, I just wanna share a little bit about lessons learned and I'm right at time. So I'm gonna go move quickly here, just that um, through the project, we learned a few things. So first of all, we learned that um, our original vision for just connecting to farmers to markets was not quite right. Um, the farmers participating certainly wanted folks to know they were out here, um, that they're doing this work, that there are Black farmers in this region, and they want folks to know about them. Um, and you'll hear more from them in each of their own ways um, regarding their stories and how to connect with them. Um, but each of the farmers participating had very different needs in terms of connecting with people and um, potential markets. Um, and there was a pretty substantial concern across the board around tokenism and um, folks who, uh, who are coming forward to support Black and farmers of color. Um, but maybe in not quite the way that, um, that they need support, that folks need support. So um, we've spent some time uh, with these communications tips that are on the screen here um, that are made into social squares. And for those of you that get the swag bags, you'll see um, the uh, social squares in those swag bags um, that uh, essentially these, these squares are tips for farmers and other small business owners to be able to consider uh, whether opportunities are right for them at the right time um, and how to move forward with uh, taking on the right opportunities for them at the right times. So um, we're looking forward to uh, finding different ways of using these tips and sharing them out with a broader audience. So with that, I'm going to quit sharing and I'm gonna turn it over to you, Alexa. Okay, I think I'm ready. Good evening, everyone. Hello, thank you for joining us. We are excited to be here. We are thankful to have spent the last few months together. At least I'll speak for myself. I am thankful to have spent so much time with these amazing people, um, the farmers, as well as the marketing team. I learned so much simply by talking to them. I was so, I was lifted in spirit by their stories. 
I was lifted by what they had to share. And I was lifted knowing that they had so much to share with others. And there are stories that need to be shared of these farmers, of their experiences, of their businesses, and of their future plans. So I'm thankful to have been a part of this team. So Allison, Will, Mama P, thank you so much for having me. And um, yeah, let's share some portraits. So a little background to why this is titled Far Farmer's Portraits. Becca has already given a little bit of background about the project in general, but specifically when it comes to marketing, we were, you know, as we engaged in conversation, as we met, we tried to recognize and hear what farmers were saying was the need. And one thread that kind of stood out was, we want to share our story. We want to own our story. This is for us. It's about us. And we need to be heard. So that's kind of where this started. And thankfully, um, with Becca, Rebecca and her experience with working with so many different groups, she was able to come upon this um, app or website called Memory Fox, which literally allows us to share stories. So the purpose of this campaign is to glean information from each of the farmers. Questions like, where do you, why do you farm? You know, how did this come about? What struck your interest? Um, send us pictures of farming, or if you're working with the community, let us share and engage in the, some of the things, your daily tasks that you do. Um, we wanted them to talk about the products that they work with, they farm and they produce that they are most proud of. And we also wanted to learn different ways of how they prepared their products. But in addition to that, it was very important to us that they shared their message about what they wanted the community to know, as well as what they required from markets, from markets or partners or collaborators. The other piece that we were most intrigued by are the challenges, right? So if we're really talking about lifting up and honoring people and recognizing who they are, what they are, and giving them a seat at the table, we need to understand why they're at that table. And we need to know what we do in order to provide that space for them and lift up their own stories. So now I'm going to share with you some of our project. And um, our hopes is that this is something that can be used past tonight. This is something that the farmers can also use if they um, don't have time, don't want, or don't have a current need to own a full blown out website. This is a portrait. This is a location where they can share these websites and um, people can find them and learn how to contact them. So without further ado, hopefully I have sharing abilities. I do. All right, hopefully you can see my screen. So this is the main site for Genesee Black, Genesee Valley Black Farmers, the stories of Genesee Valley Black Farmers in New York State. And these, this will list, this main page will list the four farmers that we started working with because Kenneth was very much a part of this project up until the end. So we wanted to make sure that we kept his portrait and his profile on this main website. And I'll run through what the main site looks like. I'll show you a couple of the videos and then we'll show you the individual websites for each farmer. So first we're gonna meet Pamela Reese Smith. I garden because I love the challenge of it. I love the seasons, um, the growing seasons are just so beautiful. I love the. The, the exercise, the growing of seeds and plants and watching them, you know, get to their maturity so that you can harvest them and, and have the abundance. Um, that's why I garden every year. And hearing from Mama P is just always a blessing because she is such a wonderful community activist. She is so knowledgeable. She is always making sure that people are connected. She's mentoring. And, you know, we call her Mama P because she truly is our Mama P. So that is uh, Pamela Reese Smith. Next, we have Mr. Will Moss, Jr. Hi, my name is Will Moss with Moss Produce or Fresh Fruits and Vegetable, uh, located out of LB, New York. 
Why do we farm? Um, we do it because uh, we certainly enjoy working the land, the whole preparation of going into the field, um, planning, cultivating, weeding, controlling uh, the growth of our produce. Um, we enjoy the harvest time um, and also to be able to serve the community public um, in nearby markets. Um, we enjoy the interaction with our customers and seeing the satisfaction and appreciation of our work of uh, fresh fruit, uh, produce, vegetable that we provide them. Wonderful. Now we have Ms. Allison Espinoza. So to answer the question as to why I farm, what makes me farm, I believe humanity intrinsically, we are tied to nature and the cycles of nature, whether that be the growth cycles, the moon. And so I believe that we have a natural tie to nature. I know I have a natural tie to nature and I like to advocate for that. And I also like to inspire others to have some level of sustainability and self-reliance. And I feel that everyone would benefit and does benefit from either eating something that has been cultivated with love and care and tenderness and attention or themselves enjoying the fruits of their own labor, literally. And then finally, Mr. Kenneth Tucker. Hi, my name is Kenneth. And the reason why I like farming is because the work is exhilarating, is rewarding. Um, I think my most favorite part is the harvest, knowing that I actually collaborated with nature to be able to produce something that's so nutritious, nutritious and healthy uh, for my community. I think it's important that young black youth get involved in farming uh, so we can have control over what we put in our bodies and the amount we put in our bodies. I think actually that's like one of the most important topics facing our community at this time. Thank you. So as we started this project, you know, we, as Becca said, we went through a learning process and we thought we were like, okay, we know we want to make sure black farmers get out there. We want everybody in the world to know about, about black farmers. We want them to support them because that's just how it should be. And the light bulb was, hey, wait a second. <laughs> Every black farmer has different needs. They have different capacities. Some may want that, you know, those uh, uh, markets and those members and those uh, community people coming to them and purchasing, but some may just want to help. <laughs> some may just want to work on their products at their own pace when they want to and when they're ready. So we recognize this and this is why we wanted to ensure that each farmer for this project had their own individual voice. So we started with the main page and I won't go through every slide because I know we don't have that much time together and you do have a link to all of our stories so that you can check them out on your own. So we went through, we kind of highlighted some content and wanted to make the site appealing, obviously, because we want people to go through the entire site, but we also wanted to provide the appropriate content and, and make it educational and conversational and engaging so that community members and people from the markets would definitely come and ensure that they, they work with the farmers. So we share some of the pictures that they have provided us. And then we um, made sure that we talked about some of their challenges and the things that they wanted to highlight and things that were important to them on this journey and their journey. And more of what influenced them to be part of the farming or agriculture industry and any goals that they had for their businesses and for the communities. We also wanted to get to know a little bit about their products and, and what they were doing um, with their products and what they hoped would be beneficial for their communities. So this was a really great project to work on and it was enlightening for me. Um, I'm hoping that everyone gains something from this. I'm hoping that um, every, all the farmers are excited about sharing these projects. 
But at the end of this main site, we're able to go to each individual farmer's site. So we get to go to um, Mama P's site, Allison and Will's site. And I will share those briefly with you. This is Alan's, Allison's site, wonderful picture. She loves her bird, her ducks and her chickens. And she loves the cycle of life. And she was just telling us how daylight um, impacts how the ducks and the chickens lay their eggs. So just exciting information that everyone wants to share. I won't tell all her story because she can tell you when you contact her to find out about the programs that she offers. So Allison, you can contact her through her Instagram page, which is Root Workers Croft. We share more specifically. So again, Allison can share this out to other people if they have information um, or if they wanna learn more about her. But we go into also um, her bee harvesting, which is very, very important to Allison, her apiary. And she talks about the process of how the honey is harvested, how it's strained, um, and how it's packaged. We also learn a little bit about your, you know, her alias of Dr. Doolittle. And she walks us through and shows us some images of her ducks and her chickens and the eggs. And then it's always important, Allison is a, a vivid uh, community worker and a program um, communicator. So she does have goals for her farm and her businesses that she wants to share with everyone, as well as her products, which include fresh herbs, dried herbs, and seeds. So you learn all this through her website and the packaging for her tea and her seasoning blends and the, ben the health benefits of all of her blends. And then we just end with creating space and encouraging support for black farmers in the Genesee Valley. And you have a link back to the main black farmers portraits um, page. We have the same for Mama P she's an urban farmer. She wants the people in her community to know how to farm and to learn this trade and skill so that they can be successful, but so they can also have a tie to the community, excuse my little dog, um, tied to the community, tied to the earth, because it's so beneficial for, you know, our holistic health. And you can contact Mama P with her Google phone. Her telephone number is right there. And again, just going back through all the portraits and making sure that the items that she wanted highlighted are here. Now, these websites are not static. They're completely dynamic. If um, our farmers that we have worked with want to modify or change or update, you know, we definitely will be accessible for a particular time in order to do that for them. Um, Mama P donated so many wonderful, beautiful pictures about her, her urban farm, um, the products that she harvests and the things that she's been doing. She has a wonderful story about how she started farming, which is absolutely beautiful, and how she likes to prepare her products from the farm, which is also, as um, Becca had mentioned, her dry teas, which are very special and important to her. And then we have, she has now community is, is as I mentioned before, it is so important to Mama P. Um, and, and recognizing that Black farmers need to be heard, need to have a space, they need to be able to sell their products so they can make money, and our community needs to have access to these products so we have fresh fruits and vegetables to benefit from for our health and our prosperity and our future. And back to our main page. And finally, Mr. Will Moss. Um, this one, um, Will is found in the Rochester public market. And Will has always said that, you know, he wants a website. He wants people to find him, but he doesn't want to manage it because he's busy. He's on the farm harvesting. And then when he's not on the farm harvesting, he's doing other business to procure funding or to pro procure equipment or to gain help or to make connections and collaborations. So we wanted to make sure that we you know, put the best of what he offered us up front so that we, this could be a space for him to share. And you know, potentially in the future, maybe we'll go to a next step, maybe a Facebook page, maybe a landing page, maybe a website. 
you know, maybe there'll be an intern that, you know, is able to assist him to, to get to that next step in order to really market his business. However, we don't necessarily want to market to the point where we're just getting an onslaught of people coming to the farmers and they don't have the capacity to help them, which would shed them in a negative light because maybe they can't get to every request and ask. So we want to be able to balance, you know, the incoming of positivity and messages and requests. So this is one way to do it. So we're pointing everybody to the Rochester public market. This is, you know, one of his interviews about who he is and how he started. He talks about his story, his foundation, his parents, um, and farm life, growing up on the farm. Uh, it's a generational farm. It's a legacy. Been around for 40 years, over 40 years. Um, lots of pictures about family on the farm because that's who's working it. This is their story. This is their portrait. He also had a great interview on Spectrum last year. So we wanted to make sure that we put that up front for people that were looking to, you know, to support, to, um, to donate, to be partners with or provide funding, which is very important. Wonderful pictures of products. His vegetables are so vibrant. Going, being able to get to the Rochester uh, produce market, just to even just say hi to him is amazing. And I will say I went over the summer and my goal was to get collard greens. I heard that everybody was looking for them. So I made sure that I found them. Will was just so generous and I am so thankful. I'm still thinking about those greens and I will be back up in Rochester very soon to get some more. Um, and then this is actually a clip we found, Becca found from 2015, which was directly from the market that gave a little more history about the Moss Family Farm in Elbion. And um, we just thought it was really great to add to this, to this portrait. And then finally, we head back to our main page. So those are our portraits of the Genesee Valley Black farmers. Um, I was excited to be a part of this. I was happy to um, be able to be part of the conversation for uh, understanding what Black farmers needed in terms of marketing to find out what they certainly did not need. And um, it was definitely an eye-opening experience. I'm really thankful to have been a part of it. And I hope that I can help them and others in the future. So thank you all for having me take part in this project. Thank you so much, Alexa. That was really wonderful. And it was, uh really wonderful experience working with you throughout these past months as well. Um, and we have such an amazing opportunity to have um, the group of farmers we worked with here live. Um, so not just looking at um, pre-recorded content that they've um, donated to this site, um, but um, we'll get to hear from them in person um, for a panel discussion right now. Um, so I'll be um, conducting the panel discussion and um, throughout, I really invite you all to um, put your questions in the chat if anything comes up that you'd like to hear more about, um, any specific questions um, to each farmer on the panel or just in general to the group, you can make that known. We'll be collecting those throughout and we'll have um, some time at the end um, to open up for your questions, all right? Um, all right, good to see your faces. Um, okay, so um, first up, I'd like to, you know, we, we have some information on the beautiful site that Alexa created about how you all started farming, but maybe um, for the purposes of this event, we can also just go around and you each can share the story of why you started farming and what keeps you at it because it's not easy work. Um, Allison, can I ask you to start us off? Yes, of course. You know, I actually wasn't sure if my dog was going to start going. I have a, a livestock guardian and, uh, if, if she's indoors, she's not really indoors mentally, she's outside and, uh, is still taking no breaks whatsoever. So, um, bear with me if you do hear her bark, um, that may occur. Uh, but with that being said, I'm Allison Espinosa. 
um, from a root workers craft. Um, I'm located in West Bloomfield, New York, which is about 20 minutes south of Rochester. Um, so I am located in the Finger Lakes region. I'm closest to Honeyoy Lake, but um, my favorite lake or one of my favorite lakes is Lake uh, Canandaigua Lake. And that is where I find myself most often if I am not on the farm is trying to be it on the water. Um, with all of that being said, what brought me to farming? Is that the, is that the question, Emily? Is that the, okay, well, long story short, um, it's not as if I really grew up on a farm or with a family that um, immediate, my immediate family was doing any farming. Um, I am of Puerto Rican and Dominican descent and uh, as well as Nigerian. And um, having that background growing up Afro-Caribbean and in Florida, um, so right where all the hurricanes hit is where I am from. Um, so leaving there at the age of 18 and actually going to live in Syracuse, New York, that area um, on a horse farm was, I would say, one of the most eye-opening experiences I've ever had. Um, I've always been very close to animals. Um, that's always been something that um, has been just intrinsically very close to my soul. Um, I've been very close with animals as long as I can remember, if not, uh, you know, pretty much since being a baby, like feral cats would like me and just like everybody else. So um, not my story, my mom's stories. So um, I just go by what she says. So I've always had a tie with nature in that way. And so anything in pertaining to animals and though th that sort of is what brings me to doing the type of farming that I do, um, which is mainly focusing on my livestock work. Um, and while I was in New York, I began studying um, veterinary medicine. So I'm a certified veterinary technician and have been for over a decade now um, and constantly expanding my education and continuing education for that because many things innovate and change in the veterinary field. But I've also pursued herbalism. And so just kind of doing uh, animal and livestock herbalism. And so these were passions that I sort of had with animals always. And so when I finally... Um, you know, found my husband, became pregnant um, and all of that. Uh, I had my son and I began to realize that uh, baby food is scary with all of the preservatives in it. And there's really scary things happening with children's snacks and foods. And so um, when I was pregnant uh, very early in my pregnancy, uh, grocery shopping was scary and horrendous. So at that point I was like, let me start tomato plants and let me start uh, container gardening. And I was living in Denver, Colorado at the time. So you can imagine just not a lot of space. Um, but what really brought me there was actually my son um, and, and understanding that I really want my, I wanted my son from inception, me to eat the healthiest foods, me to have um, access to fresh produce and fresh food. So everything that I was eating was building my son. And from there on out, I just, all I thought about was taking care of him and our future generations um, and, and those that are here now um, and the more vulnerable populations and those that are, they don't have access to fresh foods or even have access to land. And I wanna be able to offer that. Um, so that's what really brings me to farming. That's what brings me to wanting to teach black and brown folks how to raise chickens in a really easy way. We can all be farmers out here um, if we wanna be. Um, and there are ways for us to, to have sovereignty and self-sufficiency. And I can tell you collecting 20 chicken eggs a day, that's pretty powerful for me. Thank you, Allison. I love how you connect um, the ways you meet your own needs to meeting community needs. Um, Will, can you um, speak next? What brought you to farming? I know your story is quite different. Sure, absolutely. Thanks a lot, Emily. Um, first, I want to thank the whole panel, Rebecca, Alexa, uh, for being a part of this uh, Genesee Valley uh, Black Farmer Organization. It's been uh, very interesting, eye-opening, um, and it has provided a lot of opportunity uh, for me to consider uh, going forward uh, with farming. Um, thank you so much. And also, I want to thank everyone for the tribute and well wishes uh, for the passing of my mother. Uh, she definitely was um, uh, uh, instrument um, in um, the reason why I decided to farming. Uh, she, as well as my father, they started this uh, farming, basically a family affair uh, about 40 years ago. Both of them are from the islands, the Bahamas. Um, it's the culture of working the land, uh, growing your own produce, um, cultivating, harvesting, 
uh, sharing fresh fruit vegetables among family members. So uh, when they moved here, I'm gonna say about uh, in the probably early mid 60s, uh, they just continued um, to work the land. Um, they got involved with some of the major local farmers here in Albion, New York, where we're located, um, situated between Rochester and Buffalo, Orleans County. Um, my father, you know, worked many, many jobs and, um, but he always uh, kept his connection with the land. Um, and after retiring, um, he decided to go full force um, in uh, being a farmer um, and also growing his own produce and providing to the public, specifically uh, in the Western New York area. And as mentioned, uh, as part of my website, we uh, attend the Rochester Public Market. We've been there for well over 30 years. Um, why I farm, it's specifically me and my family. Um, I could speak for myself, which I believe also my siblings, which are, I have seven of them. It's exciting, it's, it's exhilarating. Um, uh, just the anticipation of the upcoming season, as Allison had mentioned, um, to be able to work the land, the physical aspect of it, um, from you know turning up the land to planting, cultivating, weeding, pest control, all of that to the point of uh, seeing the produce, the, whether it's collard greens, peppers, tomatoes, squash, uh, bloom and come to fruition. And then at a point of uh, going into the field, working it and harvesting it, um, packing everything up, taking it to the public, to the community, um, at the Rochester Public Market, as well as you know various cooperatives that we work with, um, to provide uh, a form of fresh fruit, something that's much uh, more nutritious than, as Allison had mentioned, that you would otherwise receive in a processed, you know, frozen package or something of that nature. So um, that physical aspect of it is great. I love the, the, the planning of the season, um, coordinating. And this is something that uh, Alexa and Rebecca and Emily has helped me with to think about as far as, you know, expanding our business, getting more of our produce and product out to the public. Um, so we certainly do appreciate that. We love the connection of working with customers. I mean, we have a lot of uh, loyalists, uh, customers, um, repeat customers that know us in, in the area, the Rochester Public Market, that uh, appreciate what we do. And we certainly appreciate them. And um, it's just a connection that we have with them as far as um, what we do, what we produce, and the acceptance on their part of the produce that we provide to them at an affordable price. So all of those things, excitement, working with the community, interacting with people, is what uh, brought me to farming. Thank you. That was beautiful, Will. Thank you. How about you, Pamela? What brought you to farming? What keeps you at it? Emily, you're on mute. I had my um, little finger right on the unmute button. <laughs> Think that's funny, Will? <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm from Harlem. Um, I grew up in, you know, what they call a concrete jungle because there, there's very little, you know, agriculture in New York in, in, in my neighborhood besides a couple of parks. Um, and moving to Rochester um, to a whole different you know, type of environment um, and learning from um, my ancestors that my great-great-grandfather was a farmer on 50 acres of, of land in South Carolina prompted me to try and grow my, my first garden. Um, after I found out that you know, he existed, um, and that's where it started. That's like over 45 years ago that I started my first garden. Um, my first garden was, you know, difficult, and I was afraid of worms, and I was also afraid to touch the dirt. So, um, you know, over the years, I've learned, you know, how to, you know, to love this, you know, the soil, and you know, love what it does, you know, to seeds. Um, seeds are so important to, you know, our lives, and so I've been watching the seeds grow for many, many years, and I love it. You know, in every season, like Will and Allison were saying. You know, when this season starts, it's like a renewal for me every single year that I go outside that first, you know, day when that soil starts to warm up and you can prepare it to put, you know, 
those seeds and those plants in the ground. It is one of my, my most beautiful times of the year. You know, I was thinking recently about, um, you know, what's important about, you know, my growing and why I grow. Um, and I just recently came to the epiphany that my entire growing experience has been to uh, bring the opportunity to people who never have had a chance to do it. So um, I've been thinking about, you know, how my whole life I've been trying to bring people along, just bring people along. And so my experience is, you know, growing up, leaving Harlem, you know, growing up in, in some extreme circumstances of neglect and poverty, you know, coming to Rochester and finding ways to, to build Pamela um, has been really important to me. And it's always been, you know, centered around my wanting to bring other people along. And over the years, I have brought so many people along, you know, and I think that that's what my life is, is all about at this point, um, that I want to continue to bring people along. So my teas and my herbs came out of my, you know, wanting to you know, show young, you know, young teens and other, you know, growers in the community that they could grow to sell. And I've been trying to instill that into the community for the last 20 years, you know, to try to grow your crops so that you can, you know, find ways, you know, to, to bring money into your, to their homes. And so I've been, you know, um, successful in that in a way, but I also have had a lot of barriers that have, have prevented me from providing, you know, that real, um, you know, um, experience for them because of, of, of life, because of society, because of, you know, our environment. And um, my goal now is to try and continue that work. And I plan on using my teas and my herbs now, you know, for some incubator type programs that I can help others because I really, you know, feel that that's where I need to be. So in the future, more than likely, you'll see other people coming on board and me teaching and sharing everything that I have grown and learned you know, um, to help someone else. So I'm gonna keep bringing others along with me because I love bringing others along, especially those who want to learn and want to help themselves. So that's who I am and that's what my whole business is about at this point. Thank you for allowing me to share my, my little story. And um, Emily and Alexa and Rebecca, you guys are great. You know, thank you for bringing us along with you as well. Thank you, Pamela. Um, one of such a strong theme I hear um, across all your stories is really just this um, growing alongside the land, growing more deeply rooted with the land. Um, it's kind of um, learning to be entangled with uh, the environment, with our communities. Um, one of the big themes that we've discussed throughout this project as we've tried to design um, marketing tools that could be like really of service to your businesses have been um, surfacing some of the more specific challenges you each deal with as entrepreneurs. Um, so definitely as farmers and as entrepreneurs, um, you're calling the shots for your own business and you have to wear a lot of different hats um, and deal with a lot of different circumstances and make those choices, um, you know, for so many different aspects of your business. Um, and I'm curious if you can each tell us a little bit more about um, a specific challenge that you've wrestled with as a farmer, as a business owner. Um, yeah, and just kind of describe the situation a little bit and maybe we can go in the same order. So Allison and then Will and then Pamela. Thanks, Emily. Uh, so that's a wonderful question. Also very loaded um, as in challenges like um, growing up not being a landowner or really having ties to agriculture um, and also not really having access growing up with three other siblings. So I, there was four of us. Um, my mother and my father were married for 20 years and then she became single mother of four children. And so um, that was, you know, going to different high schools, a very, I have, I've had to adapt uh, to, to challenges. So um, usually I think what most people would perceive as like itemizing challenges, I just, I just go, I, I think uh, there's, you know, there's at this point, I know mama Pamela um, has 
has been in, in community with me. Will has been in community with me. Rebecca has been in community with me for some time. I'd say Emily uh, definitely has had some conversations with me in the past. Um, and there's also a few of you on the call that I can see that I definitely have worked with. Um, and I just go, you know, um, and whenever there's a challenge or something that comes up, I identify the solution. Um, and so I will say one of my preliminary challenges and my more, um, I think palpable challenge would be just farming on my own. Um, so now being a single mother of a son, um, you know, my son is six and he thinks he's big man on the farm, you know, and he tries his best, um, you know, but he is a great chicken tender. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put, call him out on that. He's, he's really, really great. Cause he's not here to defend himself. He's wonderful at tending to the chickens and he will collect chicken eggs. Um, but if I have tomatoes present, he's collecting the, the tomatoes in his mouth. So he, he helps as much as possible. Um, but really a lot of my physical labor is done by myself. Um, much of it is. So ch changing the bedding, it's labor. My main, uh, my main challenge is labor. Um, and I, I run my farm on a little bit over an acre. Um, I have to keep up uh, shelter. I'm constantly uh, growing my flocks and moving flocks through. Um, and so, when I identified my main, one of my main issues as being labor, um, I decided, okay, well, I'm going to go for grant money. And once I get grant funding, I'm going to have built a closure, an enclosure of raised beds. Um, and it's going to be pretty much bird proof. So my chickens can freely range without me worrying about them getting into my goods. And it's something that I could easily work. Um, so I kind of troubleshoot a lot of those things. Um, and also making much of my work consultation based, making much of my work education based, um, making a lot of it in a way where you can contact me for programs. If you wanted to learn livestock tending, or if you wanted to learn herbology, um, or if you wanted to learn anything like these are sorts of the things that I had to identify labor. I can't, I, you know, I'm spry and healthy, but that doesn't last forever. Um, my, you know, I know my body won't last forever in that way. Um, and so I, I need to take care of myself so that I can assist and provide for my community. And that's how I've al always worked smarter, not harder. So, um, you know, and especially if I want to be able to show folks how to farm on a smaller scale, um, I needed to be able to give them an example of ways that they themselves could also work something in a, in, a, in a way that they'd be able to do it. If they have a nine to five, can they go really quick to their raised beds and go, uh, grab a, a bushel um, of any sort of green if they wanted to. And these are the kinds of things that I think about. So yes, a lot of challenges, challenges being brown and uh, having a bunch of land behind me and not having access to 69 acres of arable land that is for sale right behind my house. And I look at it every day and watch white farmers work on it um, who are able to afford the rent on it. Um, and so, you know, th these are challenges, yes, but honestly, it just makes me work that much harder um, for that goal. Thanks, Allison. And I love um, just that problem solving hat you wear and the way you've modified your business to really think through what's sustainable for you so that you're, you know, as you're thinking of yourself as like, a model or a template for other people of color to become farmers. You don't want to be modeling burnout. Um, and I love that consideration. You named it perfectly. I do not ever want to model burnout. That is a culture that is very prevalent right now. And I really want to, I really want to show the community that we, it, especially if we want to go fast, we go alone, but if we want to go far, we're going to go together. Um, and I, that's why I'm really, really trying to make it so that I can work it, it's sustainable for a single mother to work it, um, that can be as inspirational for others. Thank you. All right, how about you, Will? Your business uh, model is quite different than Allison's. Um, it's a little bit different, but I can uh, relate to Allison. Uh, great story, I appreciate it, uh, Allison. And we've uh, collaborated over the the years, uh, I think it's probably about two years that we've been in contact with each other, uh, discussing um, different uh, models and challenges and things of that nature. Um, um, 
as far as uh, challenges, it's similar to what Allison had talked about is having uh, labor help. Um, uh, we actually um, farm approximately <laughs> Uh, actual farming and working land about, I want to say close to eight acres, but we also work uh, with other major farmers, which allows us access to their land and some of the produce that um, they grow, um, we actually are able to harvest. So um, our business, I mean, it's, it's, it's an eight month business from, you know, from start of uh, mid-May all the way down to December. Um, it's a lot of work. Um, it's intense work and um, it's physical work, which I do enjoy and I do pace myself. I don't want to, like you guys just mentioned, model uh, burnout. Uh, I do pace myself and um, the main labor part of our business um, is myself, my brother, and one other uh, labor that we have. Uh, we do have um, help from uh, my other siblings, um, which is another, you know, four or five of them that will help out with harvesting, um, you know, the produce um, just before the mar market runs. And we go to the market three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So in between times, we're constantly, you know, busy. And then when we get to the market, it's showtime where we have to display our produce and to sell to the public. So uh, that's part of the... Um, challenges that we work um, through. And over the years, we've been pretty uh, manageable and uh, successful in, um, you know, working through that particular labor uh, challenge. Um, the other obvious challenge is uh, finance, um, getting support. Um, as Allison had mentioned, um, you know, the ability to receive uh, funding um, for, you know, uh, farm equipment. Um, um, you know, we've pretty much have done it over the past, I'd say good 30 years, uh, mainly doing things by hand, planning by hand. Um, we just, you know, in the past year, uh, was able to uh, generate enough funds um, from our own earnings, our own other jobs uh, to purchase a tractor. I mean, how exciting is that? A tractor. And also we were able to purchase a transplanter that we can pull behind a tractor that people can sit in um, and just feed the machine. And rather than bending over, breaking our backs, um, that's gonna actually help with you know, productivity, the efficiency of running our business, okay? So that's uh, uh, one of the challenges that we had dealt with um, over the last 30 to 40 years and just within you know, the last year this is going to be the first year farm season that we're going to be able to use a tractor and a transplanter. So we're, we're very excited about that. Um, and I would say the, the other challenge is, you know, breaking into markets. Um, you know, we're equal, you know, opportunity. We, we love all people, black, brown, white, uh, of different race, class, um, gender, and, um, at the Rochester public market, uh, it was, you know, it's kind of difficult to break into that market. And we started with just one stall and um, was relocated to another year after another spot after probably working there for about 25 years. We were we were given two stalls, which was uh, very exciting at the time. And, um, you know, we kind of kind of kind of pushed it. We talked to the right people and. We felt like it was a little political as far as trying to get um, two stalls. And, um, but we broke through, we were pretty persistent. Uh, my father, my mother, uh, they did a great job in you know, building a reputation and community to kind of work through the challenge of um, uh, saying, hey, we are legitimate black farmers. Uh, we deserve you know, equal representation. And so uh, that was also to kind of work through that challenge. And, uh, I must say, um, not only are, you know, not only do we have two stalls, uh, we, we just over the last two years uh, purchased an additional stall. Uh, so now we have a total of three stalls that we're, we're working with at the Rochester Public Market. So, um, you know, the challenge of labor, the challenge of funding um, to get equipment, and also the challenge to break through, you know, barrier markets to, you uh, to be seen, to, to represent our business, uh, to present our produce to sell to the public.
Yeah, thank you. Well, yeah, there are so many challenges to bring the work to scale. Um, and of course, there's just kind of like a floor that you struggle at until you kind of reach the next level. And that's one that's really hard to get over without like a being flushed with capital, right? Absolutely. And, and, and once you break through that floor or you break through that ceiling, I mean, just you, you're driven, you're motivated. I mean, it's like the sky's the limit, you know? So, you know, imagine this tractor and this transplanter, how much more that's we can build upon that. So we're excited and yeah, it's one of the reasons why I enjoy farming, the challenges that you can overcome. Thanks, Well, I'm excited to see what this tractor brings forth in the next season for you. Okay, um, last up, Pamela. I know you've already mentioned uh, one challenge that you've experienced with just demonstrating the kind of like economic sustainability to youth. Um, if you want to expand on that or others, please, please go ahead. Yeah, I was just <clears throat> thinking about what Will just said about um, breaking our backs, you know, in the soil and breaking our backs on the farm and how difficult it is to farm. Um, and I am so happy that your family has received some um, equipment that's going to help with that because, you know, in my research and over the years and watching, you know, farmers and learning about farmers and learning about our ancestors who were breaking their backs. You know, it's huge. And thank you for 40 years of that. You're getting your first tractor. What is that all about? I mean, congratulations. Um, yeah, I was thinking, I took some notes as um, um, as Will and Allison were, were talking. Um, you know, and, and it's Allison and Will both know, and Rebecca and everyone know that for me, it's training and education. You know, training and education um, is the key to helping us uh, bring our work, you know, to a different place. Um, and I know that we all are ready to do that. And, and that takes me into, you know, like someone like myself who's been doing this work for so long and I look at Allison um, and I think that one of the biggest challenges for me is to be able to support her and pass the torch to her so that she can get out of this community and do the work that she loves to do. And we have all of these challenges and these barriers that get in, in the way of all of that. Because it's not really that serious, you know, for us to be, you know, able to, you know, bring, you know, those resources to the community. And it's something that I've been fighting for for many, many, many years. So, you know, I look at Allison and I look at, you know, at her work. And one of the things that I, I, I will do is to continue to hopefully reach out to her and get her in the community the way that she wants to be in the community. And try to, you know, remove some of those barriers that prevents young people like herself, you know, from reaching her goals. Um, you know, I think that's very, very important. Um, and as far as challenges in, in particular, I am a master at um, solving problems. Um, I, think I, I think I've been solving problems since I was like two years old. <laughs> you know, um, so, it, it, and what was the other part of the question, um, Emily, that you were asking me? Um, it was really just to describe some challenges and yeah, like how yeah, you're yeah. So, so yeah, you've been telling us. Yeah, my challenge is really, um, you know, bringing the next generation along. Um, and I think that that's very, very important. And I'm hoping that I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm on the uh, advisory committee, um, a steering committee for Black Farmers United. And I know that Black Farmers United will one day be able to provide some of those resources to young people like Allison. <laughs> Um, so that we can make sure that her future is is broad and and successful. Um, and there are many Allisons out here who need that support. So hopefully, you know, we'll we'll create some type of uh, you know training and education where people like myself can pass on all the knowledge and you know skills uh, that can help you know them be better. And and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I, I think um, one of the big messages that we hoped would come across here is just that there are Black farmers in this region, right? And we need to be growing more of them. Um, and that happens by demonstrating like the viability of farming, that happens through training and education, it happens through mentorship. Um, all of these things are so important. Um, We've had a couple questions come through the chat, um, two that are somewhat related. Um, and I am going to um, 
relay both of those and then um, maybe offer a way they can be kind of combined. Um, so we have from Victoria, what is the best way for consumers, what is the best way consumers can help black farmers other than purchasing their products? And then from Chris, a question of um, how, um, how um, good markets, uh, how markets and partners could consider being good partners to black farmers. So each of these questions has to do with like, what are your recommendations to consumers, to markets? How can um, both people at an individual level and then um, groups or markets actually work best with you? So what advice would you give um, at each of those levels um, to be good partners to you in your work? Uh, thank you, Emily, for the panel question, as well as uh, audience member question. Um, Chris, that's a great question as well. So I actually, I can see how I could answer both of those with a similar sort of uh, feel to it. Um, for me, I'm a very research-based person. I like to any, any one individual or organization that either reaches out to me or that I am interested in working with and may want to reach out to, I do my research and, you know, I do my due diligence. And so my recommendation for anyone who would want to work with myself or any of who I know to be my peers, I would recommend research be done, see what it is that they do. Um, and how they how they showcase it if they do like will himself will's not a social media guy i think i put in the chat will you're going to find him in the field or you're going to find will in the public market that's where you're going to find will but you also will know when he's at the public market and when what times and when you can find him so if you wanted to ever speak with will you could and there's also a spectrum story on him so if you were to google him you would find a spectrum story. If you were to Google me, you could find a spectrum story. Um, and so you could see my capacities, my education, my certification, my credentials, my qualifications. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a veterinary technician of 10 years. I've made that very clear uh, in my career, my background. And so anything that I do with livestock, you can pretty much guarantee I do know what I'm talking about to some capacity. Um, and so if you have an interest with animals or livestock, so I guess my the answer would be researching and seeing what appears to be using your good judgment, the capacity of what that person could do potentially for what, if, if collaboration is even something, let's say you need a hundred broiler chickens a week. Well, a hundred broiler chickens a week, maybe I could do it. You could definitely ask me about it. Okay. Um, and I, I may be able to do half and have another farmer that can do another half. But if, if it looks like you need a hundred pounds of corn, well, I, I don't have the space, the capacity, the labor, um, and I don't uh, pretend to either. You know, I don't, um, I don't portray that in any of my imagery in any of my uh, social media and anything that I put out there is I, I pretty much stay in my lane of what it is that I offer and, and what I feel qualified to discuss and to teach. And um, I'm also constantly learning. And so um, I think it's important that people do their research upon the black farmers and who, whom it is that they seek um, to work with. Um, so research is a, is a big part of it, just so also you're approaching correctly, um, because sometimes it does come off as token, tokenism, uh, that, that practice of, of doing that. And so that's, that would be my first recommendation. Um, and how anyone could support me is, yes, I list labor as a, as a big challenge, but as you see, I've mitigated that uh, by making my my farm more accessible to me and easier to teach off of um, and so really what it comes down to is I really want to con I really want to be into contact with families whether that be in my area which I would consider a little more rural definitely more rural than um, where mama P is say in Rochester definitely more so um, and so you know I have some space but I'm, I'm interested in in working with universities working with um, families, working with individuals, um, with different organizations that would be interested in me bringing pullets. Um, I constantly have chicks, constantly have chickens. I incubate my chicks. I can teach distillation and copper distillers. Um, I'm a certified herbalist. 
Um, and so I also teach herbalism and herbology and seed starting. I have a greenhouse I can teach from. So these are different things that I could do either virtually, which I take part in many of these virtual events, or I can host on my farm um, because I'm very centrally located to Rochester, which is only about 20 minutes away from me. Like my main vision for my farm is to purchase that land, at least a portion of it, get it like one of those party buses, you guys know, like the VW buses. Now they're electrical, which I'm a little scared of. I want the, I want the original one. Okay. I want like the 1967 one. I already have my eyes on several. So I want one of those and I want to be able to bring groups of people to the farm and have like a community situation. Like, let's go find your plot. Let's go find your plot. Let's go build you a bed, some beds. And let's go, you know, let's go work with the chickens. Do the kids want to grab some some eggs? Grab some eggs. You have your allotment for the, for for the week. Whatever you want, it's it would be like a CSA. Only you come and be on the farm and enjoy that bucolic lifestyle that you don't have access to living in the city. Or it, maybe if you do live right up the street, you don't you don't have a farm. Um, and so you know, for me, it's about just being open to the community. Um, and my home is a historical home. It's eligible to be on the national registry. Um, and so that's something else I look forward to trying to do so that I can make my home literally an educational farm. Then I can go live in the middle of the woods somewhere because I'm on a main route and I, the road noise is enough for me. But, you know, it's, it's definitely accessible um, to what I want. So I just recommend people do your, do your research if you want to work with any uh, black or brown farmers or um, those in more um, marginalized groups or groups that um, we don't usually see in agriculture as landowners or land workers. Um, or business owners for that matter. Um, so really try to be mindful about how you approach. Um, and the, you know, realistically speaking, just, just communicate um, and hopefully no pressure, right? L very low pressure. Thank you. The other thing I heard from you, Allison, was really just to trust your expertise, right? To know what you're doing. Oh, always, always. <laughs> I think Becca, um, I, I was on the, uh, Black Farmer Fund, part of the pilot community. And Will also was on um, that community with me. And uh, Will and I were like business. We're like, okay, so I know it's a piece of paper, but what's that qualification? Because someone's gonna ask you for that qualification. Um, and that's how I was raised actually, being raised by people from, from the island. Their main thing was you need to have your ducks in a row. And I say ducks because I'm obsessed with animals. So let's just <laughs> Thank you. Um, Pamela, Will, do y'all have um, comments on what would make um, a good partner for you, either on a consumer end or on a business end? Yeah, I have really haven't figured that out yet. Um, but my um, my my goal is to create this training and education environment where people can come and learn how to duplicate replicate you know work that's being done um in the community especially in the urban environments because the inner city you know where i live and also where i have worked um, there are so many you know challenges for people to get that education and training so um i'm hoping that i will you know open that up and and i hope i'm hoping again that my teams will be you know um help with the incubator part of that because i really believe that you know people need to be uplifted but they also need to be um you know, provide a space so they can build their own. You know, I don't necessarily, you know, believe in, in, in any other way at this point than to bring people along so they can be on their own and, you know, do this. And so training in, in education about growing big crops, you know, being able to share those crops within these underserved communities where they live and also be able to provide a way to sell their crops and increase the uh, capacity for these crops. Um, because New York State is so short, you know, in the, in the gardening season, you know, there's all other kinds of ways that I think that we can and should be trying to provide um, opportunities. I've been doing this, you know, I, um, I've been working in the community for, like I said, over, you know, 30, 40 years. And when the mayor brought me on as the community garden coordinator, you know, it was because of, you know, my capacity to build community, to motivate people, you know, to get people to, you know, believe in, in themselves, to give them a voice where they live. And there's all kinds of demonstrations like that in my community, 
you know, in the Rochester community that still exists, where those, res those, those projects were started and the residents are still running those programs, you know, but they still have a lot of issues. Um, so I, I agree with Allison, you know, to reach out, you know, find out about people's history, find out what they, you know, been able to accomplish. And, and if there's some way that you could fit into the mold, you know, step up to the plate, you know, come and teach a class. You know, if you have skills that you can share, you know, come and do that. Um, but my, my, my biggest thing is to provide a face, you know, to bring others along. That's my new model is to bring others along. So, so thank you. Thanks so much, Pamela. I really appreciate that message that like help should facilitate self-determination and sovereignty. It should not be charity. Like this is, we're looking at help that doesn't create dependence. Okay, well, we have about um, seven minutes before we pass it back to Becca. How about you? What would make a good partner for you? What qualities? Okay. Um, just as what everyone else was mentioned, um, Pamela and Allison, um, just to get to know uh, myself as well as my family farm, uh, the best way to reach us, as everyone has mentioned, um, is to come to the Rochester Public Market, um, come see our display of produce and vegetables. Um, we have a long standing there at the Rochester Public Market, like I said, over 40 years. Uh, we pretty much know the rest of the uh, uh, 300 vendors that are there, um, even the people that are in the office. Um, that run the office, they know my family very well. So um, from a credential um, representation and legitimacy of us being farmers, um, you can ask around and, and, and most of the time um, people do know us, okay? So uh, as far as making a, a good partner, um, I do meet a lot of um, you know potential partners at the Rochester Market. Uh, we talk, we discuss of uh, many different possibilities. Um, some have um, um, have asked to come to our farm, uh, see what we do. Uh, we've actually shown our land and our production um, to people that have come out um, just to see what we do. Uh, Rebecca had an opportunity to come out and uh, see our land and uh, harvest some produce during the harvest season. So that was awesome. Uh, we have uh, school children, um, teachers, schools that would like to bring their children out to, to see what we do to expose young children uh, to this agriculture or this farming way of life. Just uh, give them a sense of something other than just the city, uh, something that they're not used to uh, seeing or the, the, the children has a, an eye open um, sort of excitement of what we do and it's amazing to bend over and to pick their own crop um, that they can actually eat off of the vine as opposed to going to the grocery store. So uh, we do that as well. Um, we've had Spectrum News come out and uh, they did an, ep uh, an excellent um, uh, interview of our farm and uh, the folks that work the farm, uh, including my, my, my father. Uh, so you can pull that website up or that interview to uh, learn more about us. Um, and also uh, a thing that we do is uh, around Thanksgiving time, um, uh, we have, like I said, we meet a lot of people that come to us looking for us to provide produce, to provide to families that are in need, uh, especially around Thanksgiving the holiday time. Um, and over the last, I would say five, six years, we've been fortunate to provide uh, produce to feed approximately about 400 families. Um, some of the, you know, what Allison mentioned, it can be challenging, but uh, we do all of that plant planning, produce planning in the uh, earlier part of the season. And then uh, each and every year, we kind of build upon that uh, to anticipate uh, more businesses like that or a partnership like that. So um, it's exciting, um, you know, just come to the Rochester Public Market, you know, I, as people know, I'm um, low profile. I'm not on social media, anything like that, because I'm just too damn busy working the farm, which I enjoy. Okay, so I, in order for me to bring you the produce, um, I have to work the field and uh, I have to coordinate it and uh, bring the product to you. So I appreciate that. But I'm pretty easy to find and stop by the market. And, you know, if you have time, if you're in the area, I'd be more than happy to, to talk to you. 
Yeah, thanks so much. Well, I so appreciate the reminder that like, hey, you're a farmer, you're in the field. Um, you know, people can come to you. There are ways. And um, and also just to stay mindful that like as a as an entrepreneur, as a small business owner, um, you know, give give people time to consider um your approach, give people time to um negotiate you know it's not like uh you sign a contract with like a big place and expect a delivery in like 24 hours or less you know it's not amazon and i think that resetting of just like expectations is very important and that process of self-education is very important as we learn to be in economic relationships that are really different Okay, um, and with that, I am going to pass it back to Becca, who will kind of move us through the rest of the evening. Thank you all. Thank you, Emily, and thank you, everybody. Um, that was just so wonderful, and um, just tonight feels really special, so appreciating um, all of you here. And I'm going to um, share uh, just a few more slides um, to show how folks here can uh, support um, the farmers that are participating. I know that uh, some, some ways that you can support them were mentioned in the, um, during the panel discussion, but we just wanna make it really clear and easy for folks um, for how you can support um, the three farmers participating from this region. Um, so first of all, thanks for supporting by showing up tonight, um, first and foremost. Just really glad with the turnout and um, just feels very warm and just like a really special time here tonight. So appreciating that. Um, so going beyond tonight, um, first of all, um, we are going to feature the ways that you can support these three farmers. And we've also compiled an article um, on the Food for the Spirit blog that includes all of this information in these next three slides, as well as shares uh, ways that you can go beyond to support. So here um, is some ways that you can support Allison Espinoza of Root Workers Craft. Um, as she mentioned in the panel discussion, you can bring her expertise about farming, animal husbandry, and herbalism to your community. Um, the easiest way to contact Allison is via um, her social media. She has a very strong social media presence. Um, so um, hopefully you can access Instagram and find her there. Um, so um, that is how you reach Allison. I will also drop my email in the chat. Oh. Um, so you all can email me as well for with any inquiries. Thank you. Thanks for that. And we probably should have had that on there too. We can add it to the blog too, Allison. Um, Will, as we said prior, you can find Will at the Rochester Public Market. You can also contact Will as well as Allison via email. And his email is here. Um, as Will mentioned, um, and I think maybe all the farmers mentioned, um, you know, access to capital is key. So that's not up here, but um, you know, funding capital is key for everybody participating, access to land. But here specifically, Will has called out um, the hope to connect with equipment, to plant, to cultivate, to harvest, and to take product to market. And um, the tractor is a huge um, addition to their farm. So exciting. Also a major investment. So um, we're so happy for the Moss Fresh Fruits and Vegetables that they now have the access to the, to the tractor and hope that folks can um, help contribute uh, to, to help make that even more viable for their, for their uh, farming season. And Mama P, uh, Pamela Reese Smith. Um, you can also consult with Pamela to bring her expertise to your community. Um, Pamela has 
so much uh, information to share, um, specifically in regards to farming, cultivating and preparing herbs, flowers and vegetables um, in urban environments. Um, just so much more though as well. So just really encourage you to get to know Pamela and uh, find out what expertise she can bring to your community. And so you can contact Pamela on her business line here. Um, so again, all of those uh, specifics about how each of the participating farmers want your support is on the Food for the Spirit website. So we've included the link here and we'll also drop it in the chat. Um, that's the story um, on the website there. In that story, you'll also find the link to the farmer portraits uh, created by Alexa Joan of Eat Off Art. Um, and, uh, links to each of the individual farmers pages that we shared earlier tonight, um, as well as other information just about the project as a whole. Um, we had mentioned that the first 20 people to register and attend tonight's event um, can expect a swag bag. We are so excited for the swag bags. Um, uh, we have had contributions from a couple of the participating farmers, so we're going to put some Harlem brewed teas um, in there. And um, we're going to put some zinnia seeds from Harlem brewed teas. Um, we're also going to be including a culinary blend from uh, Root Workers Croft. Um, so just, and then uh, we shared earlier the, uh, the social squares, which we'll have as magnets and um, a tote bag with the Genesee Valley Black Farmers logo. So we're excited about putting those bags together. We do need a little bit of turnaround time to determine who are those 20 folks who are the first to register and attend tonight's event um, and get them out in the mail. And we'll do that as soon as we can. And then also just want to remind folks, please, please, please consider donating to support the Moss family um, to contribute to funeral expenses and to the tractor um, and just to really give them a boost as they move into the farming season. So if you have questions, uh, you can contact um, me or anybody through uh, the contact information in the website there. Um, and I believe that is it. And I'm going to take the spotlight off of myself so that we can all just see each other for a moment. And I just want to thank everybody again for coming tonight. And I don't think I can see everybody on the screen, but it is just so wonderful to know that all of you are here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's so wonderful to see so many uh, wonderful faces. Uh, people I don't know, Ash, Ash Chan, wonderful. And Ma, uh, Mama Kay, Mama Karen, Onika, Beth Gosh, Chris Hardman, Laura Glasner, Miss Barr, Gail Wells. Thank you so much, Anu. Um, so many folks here tonight, uh, Kira, um, just, Thank you, thank you, thank you all for uh, coming out tonight and um, supporting this um, effort here in the, the western side of New York State, So, um, or upstate for those of you who are in New York City. But um, thank you so much and appreciating you all. Um, Alexa, Eat Off Art, thank you. Um, Emily, of course, thank you. Allison, Mama P, Will. Thank you all. Um, this has just been such a special um, event and and uh, and time together. So don't be strangers. Um, you know how to find us. Yeah, 